Here's a story from Grandpa for my three favorite little girls, Emma, Ayla, and Audrey. As I've mentioned, every once in a while I like to read you an older story I grew up reading, and today's story is one of those. There is a whole series of books about Babar the Elephant, written and illustrated by a Frenchman about 90 years ago. Now, the name Babar can and is pronounced differently in different parts of the world. I can't quite do the French pronunciation without messing it up, so I'm going to pronounce it Babar. And forgive me if you like to hear it pronounced differently. Here's the very first book in the series, The Story of Babar, the Little Elephant. Written and illustrated by Jean de Brunoff. In the great forest, a little elephant is born. His name is Babar. His mother loves him very much. She rocks him to sleep with her trunk while singing softly to him. Babar has grown bigger. He now plays with the other little elephants. He is a very good little elephant. See him digging in the sand with his shell. Babar is riding happily on his mother's back when a wicked hunter, hidden behind some bushes, shoots at them. The hunter has killed Babar's mother. The monkey hides, the birds fly away. Babar cries. The hunter runs up to catch poor Babar. Babar runs away because he is afraid of the hunter. After several days, very tired indeed, he comes to a town. He hardly knows what to make of it because this is the very first time he has seen so many houses. So many things are new to him. The broad streets, the automobiles and buses. However, he is especially interested in two gentlemen he notices on the street. He says to himself, Really, they are very well dressed. I would like to have some fine clothes, too. I wonder how I can get them. Luckily, a very rich old lady who has always been fond of little elephants understands right away that he is longing for a fine suit. As she likes to make people happy, she gives him her purse. Babar says to her politely, Thank you, madam. Without wasting any time, Babar goes into a big store. He enters the elevator. It is such fun to ride up and down in this funny box that he rides all the way up ten times and all the way down ten times. He did not want to stop, but the elevator boy finally said to him, This is not a toy, Mr. Elephant. You must get out and do your shopping. Look, here is the floor walker. Babar then buys himself a shirt with a collar and tie, a suit of a becoming shade of green, then a handsome derby hat, and also shoes with spats. Now, I know you girls have never seen spats, but years ago when this book was written, gentlemen would put white coverings over their shoes and socks uh, to make them just look more distinguished. And we don't do that anymore, but apparently Babar liked the look. Well satisfied with his purchases and feeling very elegant indeed, Babar now goes to the photographer to have his picture taken. And here is his photograph. Babar dines with his friend, the old lady. She thinks he looks very smart in his new clothes. After dinner, because he is tired, he goes to bed and falls asleep very quickly. Babar now lives in the old lady's house. In the mornings, he does setting up exercises with her, and then he takes his bath. He goes out for an automobile ride every day. The old lady has given him the car. She gives him whatever he wants. I think it might be fun to know an old lady like that who gives you everything you want, don't you? A learned professor gives him lessons. Babar pays attention and does well in his work. He is a good pupil and makes rapid progress. In the evening after dinner, he tells the old lady's friends all about his life in the great forest. However, Babar is not quite happy, for he misses playing in the great forest with his little cousins and his friends, the monkeys. He often stands at the window, thinking sadly of his childhood, and cries when he remembers his mother. Two years have passed. One day during his walk, he sees two little elephants coming toward him. They have no clothes on. Why, he says in astonishment to the old lady, it's Arthur and Celeste, my little cousins. Babar kisses them affectionately and hurries off to buy them some fine clothes. He takes them to a pastry shop to eat some good cakes. 
Meanwhile, in the forest, the elephants are calling and hunting high and low for Arthur and Celeste, and their mothers are worried. Fortunately, in flying over the town, an old marabou bird has seen them and comes back quickly to tell the news. The mothers of Arthur and Celeste have come to the town to fetch them. They are very happy to have them back, but they scold them just the same because they ran away. Pepper makes up his mind to go back with Arthur and Celeste and their mothers to see the great forest again. The old lady helps him to pack his trunk. Not his nose trunk, but his trunk for all his nice clothes. They are all ready to start. Babar kisses the old lady goodbye. He would be quite happy to go if it were not for leaving her. He promises to come back some day. He will never forget her. They have gone. There is no room in the car for the mothers, so they run behind and lift up their trunks to avoid breathing the dust. The old lady is left alone. Sadly, she wonders, when shall I see my little Babar again? Alas, that very day, the king of the elephants has eaten a bad mushroom. It poisoned him and he became ill, so ill that he died. This was a great calamity. After the funeral, the three oldest elephants were holding a meeting to choose a new king. Just then they hear a noise. They turn around. Guess what they see? Babar arriving in his car and all the elephants running and shouting. Here they are! Here they are! Hello, Babar! Hello, Arthur! Hello, Celeste! What beautiful clothes! What a beautiful car! Then Cornelius, the oldest of all the elephants, spoke in his quavering voice. My good friends, we are seeking a king. Why not choose Babar? He has just returned from the big city. He has learned so much living among men. Let us crown him king. All the other elephants thought that Cornelius had spoken wisely, and eagerly they await Babar's reply. I want to thank you one and all, said Babar, but before accepting your proposal, I must explain to you that, while we were traveling in the car, Celeste and I became engaged. If I become your king, she will be your queen. Long live Queen Celeste! Long live King Babar! cry all the elephants without a moment's hesitation. And thus it was that Babar became king. You have good ideas, said Babar to Cornelius. I will therefore make you a general. And when I get my crown, I will give you my hat. In a week I shall marry Celeste. We will then have a splendid party in honor of our marriage and our coronation. Then, turning to the birds, Babar asks them to go and invite all the animals to the festivities and tells the dromedary, which is another name for camel, to go to the town and buy some beautiful wedding clothes. The wedding guests begin to arrive. The dromedary returns with the bridal costumes just in the nick of time for the ceremony. After the wedding and the coronation, everybody dances merrily. The festivities are over, night has fallen, the stars have risen in the sky. King Babar and the Queen Celeste are indeed very happy. Now the world is asleep. The guests have gone home happy, though tired from too much dancing. They will long remember this great celebration. And now King Babar and Queen Celeste, both eager for further adventures, sit out on their honeymoon in a gorgeous yellow balloon. Written on the balloon, it says au revoir, which is French for goodbye. And that's the end of the story. So the author of this story made Babar the elephant act very much like an elephant-shaped human. We all know that elephants don't like to live in cities and speak like humans and dress like humans and act like humans. But it is kind of fun to pretend that they could, even though in real life I bet elephants prefer to act in their own elephant ways and wouldn't want to be human even if they could. Always remember that Grandpa loves you, even if you were a human-like elephant, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.